this is Dr. Scott Kilberg, the Video Foot Doc, here with another video for you in all things foot and ankle. Today I'm going to talk about uh, red hot swollen feet in diabetics. If you are a diabetic and you have a red hot swollen foot, it is imperative that you go to the emergency room right away and seek specialty care, preferably from a foot and ankle specialist. The reason for this is basically twofold. There are two very serious uh, conditions that can cause those symptoms uh, in the foot when one is diabetic. Uh, the most serious of those symptoms, although they're both rel very, they're relatively both very serious, the most serious of those symptoms uh, could be due to a foot infection. Uh, infection in diabetics is particularly dangerous because the diabetes process uh, does not allow the body to fight off bacteria uh, as it should. And it also creates a situation in which uh, wound healing and skin and tissue healing is not going to be as good because of the way the blood sugar affects uh, the wound healing process. So when you combine a foot that maybe has a small wound or was stepped on because uh, uh, diabetics can't feel things as well on the bottom of their feet and can easily step on an object that can put bacteria into the foot, uh, or if there's a pre-existing wound that just simply was ignored because it wasn't felt because of that poor sensation, then you have the ripe opportunity for bacteria to set into the skin, into the deep spaces of the foot. And I'm not just talking about, you know, just underneath the skin. I'm talking about in, inside the uh, lower spaces of the foot uh, where the muscles and bones sit. When that infection sets into that area, it can create a very serious problem in which the bones can be infected as well, and infection can travel along the muscle tissue uh, as well as along tendon tissue to further on up the leg. Um, this uh, not only puts the uh, leg at risk for amputation because of gangrene and serious infection, but also puts one's life at risk because that bacteria can travel up, uh, up through the circulatory system and, develop, and send its toxins essentially throughout the body which can cause uh, something called septic shock, which can be deadly in certain circumstances and cause organ failure. The second consideration and the second condition that can be quite serious is actually a little bit different from an infection. Um, there's a condition called Charcot neuroarthropathy, which is essentially a disease that is seen in people with poor sensation, uh, primarily, and diabetes is one of the top causes of this. Um, in this condition, uh, due to a wide variety of different factors, including poor sensation, possibly increased blood flow into the bone structure itself, and microscopic trauma to joints, the foot actually begins to fracture on its own without any injury or any, any type of thing dropping on the foot uh, or, or any you know, pre-existing problem. The foot will begin to fracture on its own and during that fracturing process the, the bones will essentially start to break down. Now this uh, fracturing can occur in multiple different bones throughout the foot, however the most common location is in the bones inside the middle of the foot. And what essentially happens is as those bones break down the foot will begin to collapse like this and form almost like a rocker bottom. And the prominent bones on the, on the bottom of the foot will actually um, create a, a uh, large callus area once this fracturing process is all, is all said and done. And that large callus area will oftentimes become uh, uh, open as an open wound because you're essentially walking on a big block of bone. And that open wound can lead to the potential for an infection uh, including a deep infection that might involve the bones in that area. It's very important in this Charcot condition that one gets off their foot right away because this fracturing process is a little bit different than a normal fracture which just simply occurs and then it's over with. In this process, this, um, in the Charcot process, this fracturing actually continues over a period of approximately three months before finally the fracturing stops and it begins to sort of consolidate itself and then it finally heals itself into whatever deformed position that the, the foot has uh, been taken into um, through the fracture process. And if you're walking on your foot this whole time, um, it will create a very severe foot deformity that will lead to the problems that I just discussed. So by becoming immediately uh, non-weight bearing following the uh, beginning signs of this condition, which are uh, redness and swelling, sort of the simple uh, signs that one often has when they, if they do have a fracture or injury. Um, if one becomes non-weight bearing at this point, you can decrease the likelihood that the, defor that the deformity will occur because the foot will no longer continue to collapse and it will be stabilized until this fracturing process ends. So both of these conditions, it's very, very important that if uh, you do, are a diabetic and you do notice them develop uh, where you have redness or 
uh, swelling uh, to your foot. It is very important that you seek immediate medical attention if you are diabetic because these two conditions can be very serious and can lead to lifelong deformity, uh, possible uh, amputation, and in the case of the infection, possible loss of life. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please look for more videos on all things foot and ankle on this site as well as others. Or you may check out my website at www.inpediatrygroup.com. Thank you.